Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Daily Dose of Hope. I am Chaplain Bob, and you're watching the Daily Dose of Hope. Now, that was an extended <laughs> introduction because we had some technical difficulties, but we got it all worked out, and we're ready to go. So here's the question. What is the Daily Dose of Hope? The Daily Dose of Hope is a place that you can come to on a daily basis on YouTube, Rumble, and on Facebook, and you can listen to a sermon which is really God's message to you because everything that we take here on the Daily Dose of Hope comes from the Bible, and I just go word for word. I go verse by verse, and we, uh, we unpack it together, and then hopefully you can use that to go back and read later or to have some meditation on and spend time learning. Okay, so let's bow our heads and let's ask God to bless our time as we go and look into Luke chapter 12. Lord God, Mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for being a wonderful, powerful Father. Thank you for giving us creativity. Thank you for giving us wisdom and knowledge. Lord, we, uh, we bless your name, Lord. We uh, owe you all the credit and glory that you get. Lord, we want to pray for protection of Christians all over the world uh, right now, Lord. Christians are being persecuted in different parts of the world. Uh, some we know about, some we don't know about. Lord, we pray for your protection and safety. But we also are reminded here in Luke chapter 12 that um, man can only harm the body. Uh, he cannot harm the soul. So we're, we're, we need to be encouraged by that, Lord. So bring encouragement to us today as we look into Luke chapter 12. We love you, Lord. We praise your holy name. And it's in Jesus Christ, the precious Savior's name, that we pray all of this. Amen. Okay, again, my name is Chaplain Bob. I am a grateful believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a longtime missionary, been on the mission field uh, since 2010, um, and uh, consistently or full-time, about half of those 11 years I've been full-time on the mission field. Uh, my wife is my partner in crime when it comes to uh, ministry, and uh, we want to welcome you all here to the Daily Dose of Hope. Now, let's open our Bibles uh, to the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, and that's we're going to go to the 12th chapter. So go ahead and open there. And you can see over here on the screen next to me, you can see where it says, The Lake of Fire. Okay, and we talk about the Lake of Fire quite a bit, especially it's mentioned in Revelation, in the book of Revelation, uh, towards the very end of the book of Revelation. And it's where the lost, it's where the dead... Uh, experience the second death. In other words, the soul dies there. And so we want to look at um, what Jesus had to say about this. And so we're going to look over in Luke chapter 12. And if you would, just do me the pleasure of going over and opening your Bible to Luke 12, 4 to 7. And we're looking at the fear of God. This is what I'm calling this, the fear of God. And let's read through it, and then we'll go back and unpack it piece by piece. And I say to you, and this is Jesus teaching, and I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body. After that, have no more that they can do. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Again, this is Jesus speaking. Verse 6, Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins, and not one of them is forgotten before God? Verse 7, But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Okay, a lot of times preachers and pastors will split these verses up, and uh, it's not actually proper to do that. This is all one contextual piece, so you need to put all these verses together in order to understand what Jesus was trying to teach. Um, by the way, Luke chapter 12 is a very good chapter uh, for you to start reading the Bible. I encourage you to do that. You can go right to the beginning of Luke chapter 12, and then just take about three days reading through it, okay? All right, it doesn't take long, it doesn't take three days to read through it. It takes 
uh, to really understand it, it sh you should spend about three days studying a chapter. That's my, my recipe for success. Okay, let's look at Luke 12, 4 to 7. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm titling this The Fear of God. And I say to you, my friends, notice that Jesus refers to us as friends. Okay? I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body. I've um, been watching a lot of YouTube lately, and I've been watching um, um, different talk shows uh, from America, and I've, I've been watching some of these war heroes from Iraq and, um, and Afghanistan, and I'm just amazed by the bravery of these men. And um, I noticed that uh, one of the things that they talk about in these talk shows is they're always talking about killing killing the enemy. And many of us are faced, uh, maybe we haven't been to war, but we're faced with fears of somebody taking our life. Or we have the fear that somebody might break into our home and do some bad things to us. Um, Jesus in this passage is going to give you the antidote to fear. Okay? And the first thing he says is, don't be afraid of those who kill the body. And if you are a true believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, meaning that you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, you've repented of your sin, you look up at that cross, you know that Jesus died for your sins, you know that you've been forgiven, you know that you're going to heaven, you have everlasting life. If you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, there should be no fear of death. And what Jesus is saying here is, don't be afraid of those who kill the body. Okay, the body's going to die anyways. This body eventually is going to die. Back on March, uh, I had a, um, an acute infarction in my brain. In other words, I had a stroke. And uh, it was a pretty big stroke. And I... Uh, never feared once uh, that I was going to die. Um, I was fearful of things like, would I become paralyzed? Would I be able to speak? And all that kind of stuff. But there was peace over me during the whole time that I didn't need to be afraid of death. Okay? But that's... Maybe a few people would go through something like that, having that kind of peace. And, it, and I attribute it to my my um, faith. I attribute it to the fact that I have learned that God always comes through. And when we think about this where Jesus says, don't be afraid of those who kill the body, the body's going to die anyways. And so we as Christians should go into death, whether we're taking our last breaths or sometimes it's an instant death. We don't even know it happened. Right? We get hit by a broadsided by a car and we're dead, or somebody um, shoots from a distance. They shoot a gun from the distance during, um, during New Year's or something like that, and the bullet comes down and hits you, and you didn't even know you got hit and you die. Right? Sometimes those stories, we do hear about those stories. But we should not be afraid of death. Don't be afraid of the, of the man. Notice that. Um, those who kill the body and after that have no more that they can do. They can't do anything else after that. So I was reading a story this morning, actually watching a video of a pastor in America who does a lot of worship. And he was in a very dangerous area called Portland, Oregon. And um, it's a beautiful city, apparently. I've been there once. But today it's uh, full of bad guys. They're doing bad things there. And I'm not going to get the political side of it, but there's some political side that's going on there. And this pastor said that these bad guys showed up to his worship, outdoor worship rally. And he had about 5,000 people there worshiping the Lord outdoors in a park. And um, what happened is the bad guys showed up and uh, he said, praise God, one of them got saved in the middle of the worship service. He put down all of his 
weapons and he got saved. But he said after the meeting was over, after the worship service was over, the bad guys left the worship session and they waited in the in the bushes where the people had parked their cars and they harassed people as they were leaving. And some even got attacked by bottles and rocks and things like that. Jesus says to us, do not fear those who can kill the body because after they kill the body, there's not much they can do after that. They can't interrupt your soul. So if you're a believer, trust, have faith that you will be in heaven, that you have a place that you're going to and you're going to be with the heavenly father. Okay. Now, verse five, but I will show you, this is Jesus speaking, but I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him. Now notice him is capitalized. Fear him who, after he has killed, has the power to cast into hell. Talking about his father. Talking about God. Fear God who, after he, after God has killed, has the power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him or God. Now, who's he speaking to there? Is he speaking to the believers? No, he's speaking to the unbelievers. And this is a message that a lot of pastors pass up. They don't want to talk about this because it scares people. They walk away from the church. They get up out of the pews and they walk out the back door because they don't want to hear about hell and they don't want to hear that God has the power to kill them and then throw them, throw their soul into the lake of fire, which you can see over there on the screen. And that's depicted in Revelation chapter 20. You can read about it on your own. If you're not in the Lamb's book of life, you will experience a second death, which is called the lake of fire. And all will bow before Jesus, and Jesus will repeat to them all the things that they've done, the heinous things that they've done, and he'll look one more time to see if they're written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If they are not, they go into the lake of fire. Now, that's not a mean God. That's not a diabolical God. That's a God that made an agreement with all of mankind. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross and all that he's done for you. Repent from your sins and you're saved. But if you don't, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, then be prepared for the second death, which is in the lake of fire. Does that make sense? So Jesus says, fear God. Don't fear man. Fear God because God can kill and then he can cast you into hell. And then Jesus says a second time, I say, fear my father, fear him. Verse 6, are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? So he's asking a cultural question at the time. Don't you take two sparrows and you sell them for two copper coins? And not one of them is forgotten before God. In other words, God remembers all those sparrows because he created all of them. Then look what he says in verse 7. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Now, I don't know how many hairs are on my head now. Uh, there's probably thousands and thousands of hairs on my head. But God has them all numbered. He even knows the hairs that will no longer grow back again. Right? Do not fear, therefore, Jesus says, you are of more value than many sparrows. So while God remembers the individual sparrows, he remembers the hairs on your head. God, if you turn your back on God and you walk away from God, God can recognize you by the hairs on your head. That's how detailed he is. Now, how does that apply to the first part of this uh, in context? Jesus is just reminding us that God, if you're a believer, God absolutely, positively is looking forward to you being in heaven. Fear him. Give him respect. Don't, don't fear those people that are out there telling you that you better watch out because COVID's going to kill you, right? Most of that stuff is just junk, right? It's just, it's not true, okay? 
99.98% of, you know, like there's less than 1% chance that people are dying of COVID around the world. But in the news, all we hear is that you're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to go on a respirator, the hospitals are all crowded, and it creates all kinds of fear. And Jesus says, don't fear that stuff. Don't fear the stuff that's in the world. Fear God. Fear my Father. He's the one that has the power to kill. Now, he's not intending to kill anybody. But remember, if you're an unbeliever, he has the power to kill. If you're a believer, he has the power to take your life. And there are times, I believe this with my own mom. My mom died when I was 18 years old. I believe that the Lord took my mom early because of the suffering that she did when I was a kid. There was a lot of suffering in our family. We were a very poor family for American, American standards. And uh, she suffered a lot. She had to work many jobs. She tried to start a couple different businesses. And it was just a very difficult time. She got a divorce from my father. She just had a lot of difficulties. And then she got cancer. And I don't believe that God brought the cancer on her. I don't believe that at all. But I believe when she was not cured by the chemotherapy, I believe at that point in time, God was saying, it's time to come home. Time to come be with me. My mom was a believer, and I can't wait to see her someday in heaven. So, is this a good message to share with your friends? It absolutely is. Because your friends need to know what Revelation 20 says. They're never going to read Revelation 20. Most of you have never read Revelation 20, unless you've heard me say it here on the Daily Dose of Hope. But you do need to know that you're either going to fear man and fear the world and be in you know, isolation and hide in your house and carry a gun around trying to protect yourself. Jesus says, don't fear them. Don't worry about that. Who you should be fearing is my Father. You should have, you should have respect for my Father. You should be believing in what my Father wants you to believe in, which is me on the cross, Jesus speaking. These are the important things of life. Forget about all this stuff that's going on around us. As believers, the worst they could do is take our body. They could kill us. But once we're free from this body, we're going to go be with Jesus. Does that make sense? I hope that's encouragement for you today. I thought it was very encouraging for me as I read it last night. Okay, let's go ahead and bow our heads and we will... Ask God to help us to enjoy the evening if we're in California or help us to enjoy the day here in Metro Manila. Dear Lord, Mighty Father, we love you. We praise your holy name. We know you are the one and only sovereign God. There is no other God beside you. We have confidence in that, Lord. We also have confidence in the fact that when we believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, we have everlasting life. It's promised to us. We also promise that you've forgiven all sin. But what if... Right now, somebody has a sin on their heart. They committed a sin this morning or they committed a sin uh, yesterday and they have not confessed it yet. We know that 1 John 1, 9 says, Lord, if I confess my sin, I know that you are faithful and just to forgive and that you can cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for such a great promise. And thank you, Lord, that you're taking away that guilt and the shame that comes along with sin. We love you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Okay, so you got some homework now. I'm going to give you some homework because I'm a former teacher, right? And teachers love to give homework. Andre just started school yesterday. And so uh, I've been, I'm his uh, tutor this year. Marianne's going to be working on some other projects. I'm going to be working with Andre this year. And uh, Andre's teachers haven't given him homework, but soon they will. So I'm going to give you some homework. What I would like you to do is I'd like you to read all the way through chapter 12 of Luke. I'm going to be using chapter 12 of Luke one more time this week, and I want you to be familiar with it. And I also think it's a great way for you to connect to God. All right? Okay, I'm going to say goodbye. We're going to put on a little bit of Skyly Shea, as we always do, Shelter from the Storm. Here's Skyly Shea.
something that keeps falling